creating beautiful images, even lace, art pieces, textile art, doesn't require anything special, nothing more than a sewing machine. In fact, back in the 20s, this is a book from the 20s, where people would make beautiful pieces. Imagine making lace on a regular straight stitch machine that, you know, it didn't even have zigzag. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do that too, how you can do drawing with your regular sewing machine. If you love sewing or you love upcycling like me or you make like homewares, or if you're an artist who wants to transform your drawings and images and paintings using a new media or just enhance your work, this is for you because you can do so much. Once you learn this technique, you can do so much with it. It's very like creative and it makes you come up with new ideas and it really brings something special to anything you make when it comes to fabric. Have you tried that before? <laughs> I know a lot of people try and then they give up because it's like, oh my God, the machine jams or the needle breaks, or they're scared of doing it because you're playing with the needle or something. And I understand it's like, because you don't have the tricks, you don't know the right tricks to work with this, right? Be Pretty much I learned how to sew on industrial machines because my mother and all my aunts back in Brazil, they did that and they had like shops and they would like just, uh, produce clothing for companies and so I learned to sew on one of those machines and one day I was thinking I wonder if I could like draw and make not that I know how to draw I, I'm not good at drawing at all but I because I always try to customize you know like transform pieces into something else with like easy systems um, I <laughs> I was like okay can I thinking can I create a drawing on this piece, right? And so I tried with my, I had like a juki that was um, industrial and I tried making a line with that sewing machine and it kind of worked because you know, it's just like if you stitch, afterwards you see the stitch on the piece, right? But it, you know, I kept doing it and it's hard because you have to turn things around and that would uh, create issues like the needle would break or the thread would jam or the fabric would jam underneath the foot and so just later on i learned that you can do free motion right so that's why it's called free motion embroidery or free motion free motion quilting because you can do free and then you can turn anyways and that changed my life because i was like oh, okay i can like make anything i'm not good at drawing like a free hand drawing but i can definitely do transfer designs and then just trace them and use those designs and so when I learned that, I was like, whoa, this is huge. And so I kept trying in different machines. And then I eventually I got a home machine that was actually an embroidery machine. The machine would do the embroidery itself, but I really don't like that because I don't like watching uh, equipment making something. I like the art of doing it, you know, the process. Then I kept trying. Nowadays, I have a bunch of machines and I've tried that on every single machine I have. You might think that your machine is not able to do it because you look at it and you're like, how can that be possible? But in fact, all machines can do that. If your machine can do a good stitch, you'll be able to do it. Or you may think like, oh no, but I'm not, I can't, I'm not patient. I rather um, <laughs> do like with a computerized machine or something. But let me tell you, if you're not patient, even better because it makes you patient. <laughs> it really gets rid of anxiety. I'm very anxious and so I'm always like, <sighs> I've never can relax. I'm always like very like rushing. And so when I sit down to embroider, that changes everything because somehow it, I, it's, I guess it's because I go into the zone and I also like have to focus. That makes me very calm. So if you <laughs> don't have patience, this is what you should do because that's going to make you patient. I also have students that are like, oh my God, I can barely sew. I can barely use a sewing machine. How can I possibly do things like that? But listen, a lot of beginners, it's a kind of a different process sewing than uh, embroidering because it's free. So, you know, it's free motion. So you have to like uh, control the thing with, when like sewing, you have to obey the machine because the machine is controlling and it's not free motion. So it's different. I would say like anyone can do it. And if you get started, you understand how it's not like a monster. You can definitely do it. You know, for instance, Fabiola, my student, she's in my program Remakers, and she used to be a total beginner uh, at sewing. 
And when she learned, uh, I did a little workshop for the remakers. And when she learned about uh, uh, the embroidery, she was like, I want to try. And so eventually she started to create things. She even like made a dress that was like one of her projects in Remakers. So she added embroidery to it. It's so beautiful. And then also she made like her and her husband, they were making gifts for uh, the holidays for people. And then she embroidered them to know that she didn't even know at all how to use the machine for embroidery. I'm so proud of her to see the results she's now accomplishing, right? So anyone can do it. It's just a matter of you wanting to do it. Now, what happens is usually when people try and they don't make it, it's because they, for instance, one very <laughs> simple thing that it seems like lame, but it's not, you forget to lower the foot. Because look, I embroider without a foot. You can use like a foot, a special foot for that. I rather do without the foot, um, but if you choose to do without the foot like me sometimes because there's no foot you're like i don't need to lower the foot but the presser foot right i'm talking about but then when you don't lower the foot the machine thinks the foot is up and so the tension discs on the machine don't create the tension and that makes the thing everything go wrong and then people are like trying, trying, and they don't know how to uh, fix the problem. But actually, it was just a simple thing as <laughs> lowering the presser foot, right? Also, like sometimes the, you're trying to embroider without a hoop. You definitely need a hoop to stretch the fabric. The fabric cannot be like too loose on the hoop. Or it cannot be, you know, some people can do that, but I don't recommend you do like without, the, without stretching the fabric because that would create issues and will jam and it's, you know, and it will also break the needle and it's even not uh, safe to you. Okay, so those are like common mistakes that people do, and but they don't know. So that's why I'm here to tell you that there are many uh, steps that you can take to make a perfect embroidery, you know, make it work very freely that you can go and flow and like feel really good about it. I started with lines only, you know, like I told you, like with a Juki machine that was <laughs> industrial with a clutch motor. And then I, I went to like the Zoder embroidery machine and now I can do like on old, my favorite thing is to do on old machines. I do like, because I'm doing a lot now, I do on my industrial machine. But anyway, you can do very cool stuff, you know, uh, as you learn and you practice. And let me tell you, it's very addictive once you start to when you get into it and you're like oh my god i can do so much so you keep doing it and that's what happened to me i keep i kept doing and doing and doing and now i'm like creating crazy stuff and you know quilting with it and doing appliques and different ways of appliques and all and it's really really gratifying and plus my customers love it because i sell every single piece that i embroider Okay, maybe I haven't sold a couple of them, but most of them I sell and it's awesome <laughs> because it's really, I just want to do that all day and then they like the stuff I make. So it makes my day. All right. Now that I've been talking about this all day and you already know that uh, once you know free motion embroidery, you can come up with amazing art pieces and designs and you don't really need much, just a regular sewing machine, a hoop and some thread and a piece of fabric. I want to tell you that I do have this course that um, you can enjoy and you can learn every single thing that I've ever ever learned myself with you know trial and error I've broken many many needles and, done, and I've done so much uh, trials and so I'm here to share with you so then you can master this technique because it's something that not only is really good like to me at least like it's very calming and it's good for my mind but it's also a thing that you know I make work with it I really like um, you know, I upcycle the pieces and I sell them or I create wall hangings and things like that. And I think for anyone who is, is creative is a very good medium to know to have, you know, it's like in your tool box, right? And so in the course, we're going to see how to set up your sewing machine, regardless how it is, what kind of machine it is. Most of them, there's always a way to set it up in order to do free motion embroidery. Then we're going to start from the very beginning, how you can do line drawings, how you can, you know, you're going to practice so you you have the control. It's free motion, so you have to learn how to control it. And then um, we'll do line drawings. Then we're going to play with zigzag, because which is my favorite, because you can do like full embroidery and flowers and things like that. Then we're going to do a little quilting. Um, you know, I'm not a quilter or anything. I don't do like big quilts but I do uh, quilting as like 
may, pretty much as art. So I'm gonna teach you how you know you can draw as you quilt, and so that's very fun. And I'm gonna teach you that. That's one of the modules in the course. Then we're gonna do applique, and I'll teach you a couple. I think it's three ways to do applique, including reverse applique. That's my favorite because sometimes you know you do embroidery, but to fill up images sometimes is a large area, and then you just do applique with fabric, and it's beautiful. And you can mix both of them, and you know it's really cool. And then we're gonna have a final project. So then I'll guide you through figuring out what image you'd like to create, a cool image that you can have in a piece of clothing or some, something for your house or even a wall hanging. And then we're gonna mix all the techniques that we see in the course and create this final project. This course is six weeks long. We're gonna do um, every week a new tutorial that could be one of a, a couple of videos short videos that are edited that you can just follow and so templates because you're going to create your own image at the end but throughout the course i'll give you some images and designs that you can uh, use to practice and so you understand what works for certain fabrics and all that all right so this course is 297 um, and you can sign up here there's a button down here you can go and sign up uh, also, as bonus, I'm going to give you this um, collection of designs that are fun. So after you finish the course, you can go and create your own new pieces, whatever you want to make. So I'm going to include 20 designs that are, you know, I collect a bunch of them. So I'm going to pick the ones that, that make more sense for this course and I'm going to give it to you. Also, we have uh, the private community. You can join and be part of it. So then throughout the six weeks, if you have any questions and you can, you know, or if you want to just show what you're making, you can post there and everyone can uh, help each other. And it's one of my favorite parts <laughs> of the wardrobe school community because we get to see each other, encourage each other, right? And also we're going to have live calls, right? So uh, this course is going to be not only the classes that are recorded, but I'm also going to uh, have be live. We'll go on Zoom live and then you can ask me questions i can show you whatever you need to see i can give you tips and that's uh, very helpful for your learning process as well when you enroll you go in there and there is already like a list of materials and supplies you don't really need much stuff but i share with you things that you can have and you know some some other um, tools and things that you could have to help you uh, make your process even faster and so then every week I'm going to release a new video. The first one it is to how to set up the sewing machine and then we're going to have a live call right away. So then I can help you troubleshoot anything you have. And then we start doodling with the sewing machine. And from there we go to straight uh, embroidery and then zigzag embroidery, then quilting, then uh, applique, and then finally our final project. Okay, so now that's it. So then you can just go and enroll. You can also like go and just learn on your own, which would probably take much longer and you don't have my support. So if you want my support and me to be with you, holding your hand, this is your chance. Find the button here, click on it, sign up, and I'll see you in our first live call.